The Trap Set will always be available for free, but we rely on donations from our listeners. Please visit our website at thetrapset.net and click donate. Subscribe to our show on iTunes. And if you enjoy what you hear, give us a review. This episode of The Trap Set is brought to you in part by Colectivo Coffee, handmade coffee since 1993. Check them out online at Colectivo with one L dot com. This is Joe Wong. Welcome to The Trap Set, where each week we explore the lives of drummers. I want to play something for you. You're hearing See the Leaves by Flaming Lips, featuring my guest, Cliff Skurlock on drums. Formed in Oklahoma City in 1983, the Lips have undergone many lineup changes, but since 1991, the creative core of the band has been singer and songwriter Wayne Coyne and multi-instrumentalist Stephen Drozd, who, in addition to guitar and keyboards, plays drums on most of the band's studio recordings. It takes a special drummer to replicate Stephen's unique groove and massive sound in a live setting, and for over 10 years, Cliff Skurlock was that guy. Cliff began as a Flaming Lips fan, He worked as the band's roadie, and in 2002, he became their live drummer. Eventually, Cliff became a full-fledged member of the band, contributing to embryonic and subsequent albums. I met Cliff when I was on tour with Marnie Stern, and found him to be an exceptionally kind person and an enthusiastic music fan, as well as an incredible drummer. As you'll hear, Cliff had a falling out with the Flaming Lips last year. And this episode focuses on the conflict that led to his abrupt removal from the band. In the time since the split, Cliff has moved forward, adding his intensely musical drumming to Gruff Reese, Split Level Stiffs, and Psychic Heat, with whom he'll tour this fall. Now, our interview with Cliff Skurlock. Tell me about your family growing up. Did you have brothers and sisters? I do. I have a, a younger brother, and then my dad remarried, and so I have an even younger stepsister. It was my mom that I got my love of music from. Um, she was unfortunately killed when I was eight. Um, but well, well, your mom was a musician, right? She was. Yeah, she was. Um, well, she could. She, she was. She could play really just almost any instrument you threw at her, but. Uh, trumpet and guitar were her primary instruments and she was uh, at the time she got killed she was in an all-female mariachi group called the the mariachi Estrella. actually they were um, on their way to uh, play a gig in uh, in a hotel in Kansas City when uh, portions of it collapsed and they got they got trapped under there and uh, yeah for for the gals got killed and uh so they were in their hotel room and a part of the hotel collapsed on top of them um no they were they were walking actually uh on the way to to go on stage um are you are you familiar with the the Hyatt Regency hotel collapse in Kansas City and from 81 uh not really oh, okay i it it's i see reference to it you know, here and there, they'll talk about, you know, 10 worst man-made disasters or something, and that, that's usually in there. But, um, yeah, I think the total death count was 127 or something. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty pretty gnarly. Um, and, yeah, so my mom was uh, one of the 127 or so. And, I mean, and, you know, countless more were were injured as well, but... You know, it it doesn't make for as good in news stories to, you know, talk about injured people. It's the you know the sensationalism of death. So, did your mom ever play music with you? Uh, a little bit. I started. Uh, I played guitar uh, for a while when when I was a kid, um, and so we used to used to sort of play together. But I I never could really get the hang of the guitar. Um, very well and then um yeah she took me to see the the kids are all right 
at a drive at a drive-in and um yeah once i saw keith moon then that was that was it I, you know it's like that looks like a lot of fun and i think i could do that and that's how i'm gonna get to play music what did your dad do for work uh he was a policeman oh wow yeah and my <laughs> and my my yeah, uh, younger brother is currently a policeman. Did you ever think about becoming a policeman? I don't think so. I can't. I can't ever recall ever wanting to do anything other than than play music. So you moved to Lawrence, which is a college town, right? Uh, when you're 18, I uh, my friend Shane uh, brought me to Lawrence and took me to the outhouse, and which was a, a punk rock venue um, four miles outside of town. Um, and, you know, I met these guys one night that were a band and they needed a drummer and I went and played with them and they're like, yeah, you're in. And so, you know, I just, I kind of moved to Lawrence just because I was already in that band and, um, I mean, I wanted to get out of Topeka, but it was, you know, a lot of why I originally picked Lawrence was just, it was, you know, I wouldn't have to drive 45 minutes each way to band practice anymore. How did you first hear about the Flaming Lips and how did you come into contact with them? Um, I first heard them I just had uh, had some friends that, that were into them and um, they were they were another band that the first couple times I heard them I thought, oh this is pretty cool but eh, whatever and then you know, there was, there was a night um, that I was hanging out with my friend Kristen and she put on in a priest driven ambulance and it just clicked and suddenly they were my favorite band and were my favorite band for a lot of years. Yeah, a few years later, um, I just went to a, a show, a lip show, and, and um, they arrived really, really late and um, it was just a uh, you know, it was like an hour and a half before doors were supposed to open. And so I just jumped in and started helping them load in and trying to introduce me. And at the end of the night, you know, I gave Wayne my number and said, you know, if you ever need anything, give me a call. And uh, a few months later, he called and asked if I was serious. And I said, absolutely. And he said, well, we need, we're going on tour this summer. And you know, we could we could use some help if you want to go. And I'm like, fuck yeah! So when was this? Uh, the show that I met them at was um, March March of '99. It was around South by South. Did it feel like you were their employee, or did it feel like you were their friend that happened to be working with them? Uh, that tour was was definitely more of an employee uh, thing. Um, not necessarily from any attitude they gave off that I can recall but just more from my just my own perception that suddenly I'm with I'm with these guys that you know I mean they were just they were kind of larger than life to me you know again this is were they still larger than life at the end of the tour uh in in different ways as as I got to know them um you know, like Stephen was still absolutely larger than life to me um, because I got to just see um, just how fucking talented he is and just the the depths and, you know, it's hard to hard to tell just when, you know, listening to the records and you imagine, oh, you know, or I'd seen him live a bunch and knew that he was just an insanely phenomenal drummer, but I didn't know that he had the same talent you know, on guitar, on keyboards, uh, that a lot of, you know, and I'd always thought, well, Rain, Wayne writes all the songs, but, you know, finding out, like, how many of the songs Stephen had written and just, you know, everything. So he definitely became larger to me, larger than life to me in that aspect. And, you know, I'd, I'd say probably, you know, a lot the same uh, with, with Wayne as well. Um, just and you know immensely creative guy that um is just absolutely driven and would do whatever it took to get you know to do what he wanted to do tell me how you went from being a roadie to being a member of the band that was man that was just 
pure dumb luck, really. Um, we the the Lips had been asked to be Beck's backing band on a tour, and they'd said yes. And Wayne called and said, "I don't know if Beck is aware that our drummer doesn't play drums live. There might not be a drummer. Like you play drums, right?" Yeah, I play drums. He said, well, bring your drums. Just don't get your hopes up, but I'm not sure if we might need you to be the drummer. Um, so, and, so yeah, so he, so I brought my drums down to Oklahoma. We took them up to LA. Sure enough, there wasn't a drummer there. And um, so I started, so I just started playing in rehearsal. And then about halfway through, um, there was a decision made that, well, I'm going to actually, since we're half, you know, we're a week into rehearsal, the rehearsal was two weeks that, you know, well, just this, this seems to be working pretty well. We'll just, you know, Cliff will play drums on this tour. Like, awesome. This episode of The Trap Set is brought to you in part by that Great Gretsch Sound. USA Custom, Brooklyn, and Broadcaster Series drums, all proudly handcrafted in Ridgeland, South Carolina. For over 130 years, that Great Gretsch Sound has endured. See everything Gretsch has to offer at GretschDrums.com. So what was your progression from there? When did you feel like you were a member of the band? I don't know. I mean, it was, it was weird because for, you know, a few years... Um, you know, there'd be time periods when, hey, I'm in all the photos, and then time periods like, oh, it's just us three. And then, you know, just things like that, where it was always, you know, you're a member, no, you're just an extra guy. No, you're a member, no, you're just an extra guy. Um, and I would say probably after Embryonic came out, and it was the first time that I'd gotten my name on a record listed as a member of the band that I thought, like, okay, I, I guess, all right, I, I guess I've, you know, proven myself, and... Uh, that was, like, ten years in, right? Seven, yeah, that was 2009, so yeah, seven, seven years in. And then you got kicked out last year? Yeah, just a little over a year ago. Um, it was like, what happened? Uh, I, the governor of Oklahoma... Um, who, in my mind, is a wretched human being, has a daughter who I find equally wretched. Um, and she... Why do you find her wretched? Just, uh... Well, I mean, I don't know her mom personally, so I can only judge her mom on a on a political level, but the, the things she does uh, politically, I just find really just... She doesn't seem to care about the people at all, and the the laws that she enacts are, um, I think, a lot of times are very self-serving, or they serve only a small. They they benefit a small portion of people that are already doing fine, i.e., rich white Christian folk. Um, while, you know, hurting uh, people that aren't rich white Christian folk. Um, What's her daughter like as a person? Well, her daughter has a lot of the same politics, but she also envisions herself uh, kind of a, a hipster. Um, she played laptop in a band and, um, you know, but I was just briefly around her a couple of times and just... Just, she really just I don't know was just kind of inhabited a lot of things that like she just really uh, you know like to flaunt her status as the governor's daughter and flaunt having a lot of money and flaunt being young and you know what some people would consider attractive um, you know just just things that I, I personally find kind of disgusting um, but so she had posted, she was doing some photo shoot and 
uh, I, I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm hypothesizing how, you know, how the end result happened, but I'm guessing there was a headdress there. I don't know, but she put on this headdress, a native American headdress, a native American headdress. Yeah. Like full, you know, full, full head, you know, like all, all the feathers, like it was a full, full headdress. Um, and, uh, so she had, and so she posted this picture on Facebook and on her Twitter or, or Instagram, sorry. Um, and the caption was appropriate culturation. So she knew exactly what she was doing. She knew she was appropriating culture and, you know, oh, I'm so clever. Um, with the little twist on words. Um, so it, I, you know, I have several friends that are, that are Native Americans and, um, you know, they're, they're people that have been very negatively affected by laws that her mom has, you know, has signed in or, you know, um, and they got really upset and a lot of people were, uh, you know, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of, you know, hoopla, a lot of people just saying, God, I can't believe you'd do that. That's so stupid. And a lot of people that actually were trying to say, well, maybe you just don't know any better, but here's what a headdress is and what it represents. And if you haven't figured out yet why, here's why you should not wear one. And she responded with just a really snotty, um, just again, just, you know, just a person of privilege and I can do whatever I want because, you know, my mommy's the governor and I got a lot of money and, um, that just, uh, she just, you know, was not in any way, uh, sympathetic to where she may have been wrong. Um, just, you know, and just like, well, I know a lot about native culture and blah, blah, blah. And just reading this thing just really angered me. So I commented on her Facebook page, go fuck yourself. Not that, you know, I'm not, I'm not proud of it. It's not the greatest thing to do. How I old mean, is this kid? Uh, late twenties, I guess. So she's, she's not like a teenager. No, 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 she's not. I mean, she's been married an adult for a long time. I mean, obviously a very sheltered adult. So yeah, I told her, I told her to go fuck herself. And, um, about a month later, she, I guess, ran into Wayne at some bar and complained to him. Um, it was, Griff was, um, premiering the American Interior movie, which I'm in a little bit of, and was playing some shows and had asked if I could come down and we, you know, had that week off. So it's like, fuck yeah. So I, I think I'd been home for maybe three days and was just out at the replay with a couple of friends. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, around, I don't know, midnight or so Wayne starts texting me and asking me, you know, like, Oh, Christina got under your skin, huh? Ha ha. And I was like, what? It, and it took me a second to even think about what he was saying. Cause yeah, it happened so long ago and I'd just forgotten about it, you know? Um, and he just starts digging in what happened. And I just said, Oh, it's stupid. Who cares? It was a month ago. It's doesn't matter. And he's like, no, what happened? And so I explained it and he just started freaking out. And um, did you lose your cool at any point? Like, did you do anything to escalate the conversation or was it mostly him freaking out? Well, I, I mean, just in that I, um, just in kind of defending myself, I sort of escalated it um, instead of just immediately rolling over and saying, I know I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. Well, you know, actually trying to explain this, this is what happened. Like she's, she's not some innocent victim that, you know, that I'd started fucking with for no reason. Um, but so, you know, we 
text back and forth for a little bit, and then he, I, a very good friend of mine, had had died recently, and she she'd spent she she caught you know H one N one, and she spent you know a good chunk of time in the hospital before she ended up dying, and so that was you know that had been going on for a little bit, and he knew I was upset about that, um, but and so he yeah he the the last thing he texted that night was um you know your friend just died and and this is how you repay her memory she would be ashamed to be your friend and so i just stopped responding i'm just like i don't know what was your friend a republican governor or something <laughs> no she was one of the sweetest people that had ever ever lived and i don't know and, and you know, how are the two things related it's just yeah you know i mean when when wayne when Wayne gets mad and he wants to hurt your feelings, he'll he'll pick up any unrelated thing that he can, and you know, just to just to press your buttons. Yeah. And, and so, you know, knowing that that was something that I was upset about, uh, I guess that's what he that's what he picked up. And so, yeah, I just quit responding to him because I just thought I'm just, I'm not even gonna. I'm just not, yeah, I'm not going to give it my time. You're, you're now like saying that like my dear friend that you never knew would be ashamed to be my friend. Like, fuck you. So I quit responding and the next day, um, and I was, you know, pretty used to Wayne, you know, losing his temper and blowing up and freaking out and acting. Did he do that to you previously? Oh yeah. A number of times. I mean, to the point where I, probably didn't take i'd started maybe not taking things as you know like i didn't maybe didn't take that as seriously as i should have thinking i just thought it was another one of those things he you know well if you would have taken it more seriously how would you have acted differently i well i think i probably would have you know once he brought i uh, you know instead of just stopping responding to him and just saying fuck this i'm done with it um maybe you know just like you know, do what norm normally do. Like he'd blow up, and freak out. It's you know, it's the end of the world. I'm the shittiest person on the planet, and I'd just roll over and like, I'm sorry. I know I'll never do it again. And then, almost as quickly as he he blew up, if he just completely, like I said, just roll over and show like you're you're the boss. You're all powerful. I'm, you know, I'm I'm indebted to you or I'm whatever. Then he'd get over it and shit would, would just go on. And I, so I think I just, I just thought that that was another, another one of these that for, I I didn't understand why he had gotten so mad. feel off balance were you always like worried that he might freak out about something was it that type of situation i mean it 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 was for a while i mean and and granted this he he this you know when i first came around and first joined he was a different person than the person that he is now you know when he did start start changing and did start having those those really violent freakouts yeah, I absolutely would be in fear of him and would walk on eggshells around him all the time just to not not have to not have to deal with that cuz I just I really just I don't like confrontation. You know, cuz he would he would freak out about stuff sometimes that then it turned out it was wasn't any big deal, wasn't anything that he really did care that much. Would he about. ever apologize? No. Um just and again like i never you know i mean i was i was in in fear of it i mean and i still am to some extent i haven't been to oklahoma city in a long time and i have a lot of friends there that that i miss but you know on i know his temper and how uh 
you know, how quickly he can become violent. And I also know that... Physically violent? Yeah. And I mean, you know, he grew up with, with you know, four other brothers and they, you know, if you've seen that, that Fearless Freaks documentary and there's that old, old footage of them running around as kids, like, they would beat the shit out of each other. That's, you know, that's what they did on Saturdays, you know, under the guise of playing football. But it was just, man, it was just contact just you know um so i mean i still like sort of you know i if you know if i walked into some place and he was there i'd be just like fuck man i'm likely gonna end up in a hospital tonight um well, tell me t- tell me what happened so after he, oh yeah so after he didn't return after you didn't return his texts then how did they let you know you were out of the band um like at that point we were in the process of working on that electric worm CP and uh, Dave had sent him and I, and you know, I'm sure Steven as well, like a mix of um, one of the songs. And I just texted him about this mix and then, you know, about something else. And we had a good, you know, five minute back and forth, just very mellow, text where I was like oh you know I think the drums could come down in the mix oh actually I was thinking about turning them up like well I'll never complain about my drums being turned up I know haha and um and so yeah so I just I didn't you know again just thought like okay had his weird blow up it's it's done whatever and uh yeah four or five hours later that night he starts texting me again just you know calling me a, a Nazi bully and stuff like that and at that point what triggered that i i wasn't there so i can't say with any certainty but you know a couple of a couple of people theorized that you know his girlfriend may have had something to do with it and the reason that he was cool during the day was that he was just you know probably you know working on something but then later that uh, you know but again like i don't i don't want to say because i wasn't there but it, it is definitely um a weird a weird thing in my mind that um you know had the you're a fucking asshole and then oh yeah you know cool see you in a couple of days and then a couple hours later you're an asshole again so then um, what happened somewhere around four in the morning just sent the text like you're out and uh i tried calling him and he didn't he didn't answer and i you know the next the next day left some hours you know for him to cool down and tried calling him and nothing so yeah that was the last time i i spoke with him well steven made some statement that was like well we're not working with cliff anymore for musical reasons it's it has nothing to do with christina's thing is that in your opinion bullshit uh in my opinion yeah i mean there were obviously there you know there were some disagreements i mean but you know any any band i think is is gonna disagree um and uh, you know i would i would disagree about things and you know argue argue but my point. they didn't kick you out on uh like on the heels of a big musical disagreement it was a personal disagreement right they wanted to turn your drums up <laughs> you know like right before they kicked you out yeah well see and and again i wouldn't i wouldn't even say they it was just wayne because yeah you know again i talked to talked to steven the next day and he you know, he was, you know, he was upset and also just really just like, I, what happened? I can't, this doesn't make sense to me. Like, you're, really? You're not coming back? I'm like, I don't think so. Wayne's not answering the phone. Like, I think, uh, you know, I mean, you know, Wayne, he gets, he's, you know, I think one of his, his greatest qualities that also can be one of his worst at times is, you know, he's, he's very you know he he gets an idea in his head and that's and that's just and that's just that you know but you know on one hand if he if he wasn't so so stubborn um you know the flaming lips probably would have broken up shit probably as far back as 1988 you know i could you know name times in their history where things looked bad where i think any other band would probably throw in the towel but wayne would be like no this is we're this band and we're we're doing this stuff so we're 
we're gonna we're gonna make another record and we're gonna go on tour because that's what we do and you know obviously it, it's it's works you know well now a year later how do you feel about everything like does it still hurt or, or do you feel like you've kind of moved past it uh a little bit of both i mean there's there's some i mean you know i i definitely in the last couple of years i was in the band um came to see wayne on a personal level in a different light and he did uh you know exhibit a lot of behaviors that i find you know pretty pretty detestable but at the same time you know the guy would bring in a song that would you know reduce me to tears you know um right and uh, you know and again like steven just uh, you know his genius just cannot cannot ever be overstated you know there just aren't words for the you know the just the depths of his his ability and you know i mean just and you know not only is he an absolute virtuoso musician but he's an amazing songwriter and he's got you know great taste do you think you would have left the band anyway like do you feel like even though you had such a wonderful experience for the most part in that band that you would have grown out of it anyways i don't i don't think so um i mean even though there were like i said a lot of things that i didn't didn't like and and certainly um you know the the start of the collaboration with miley cyrus stuff was starting to happen towards the you know the last couple months i was in the band and i really wasn't into the idea of that at all um no, I mean, I just, for every every bad thing, there were at least 10 great things. And What are your goals for the future, Cliff? Um, you know, I just uh, try to, try to be, try to be happy and... Are you happy now? For the most part, you know, I'm, I'm you know, getting to do, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of really cool stuff. Um, you know, like, uh, I was in... You know, I've been playing with uh, Griff Reese a lot, who's just one of my, probably my favorite living songwriter, um, just a total sweetheart of a guy. I get to get to play with him a lot. Um, been doing more studio stuff, like I recorded um, a couple weeks ago, recorded uh, drums for some of the next Posies record um, uh, band from... Oklahoma that I like a lot called Skating Polly's coming up this weekend and I'm going to record some stuff with them. Um, a couple months ago I mixed a record uh, for band uh, from from town that I really love a lot called Psychic Heat. Um, so yeah, I mean for the most part, you know, and again it's, it is it is one of those uh, hindsight things that the further I do get away from you know, from that the the lips world um yeah i didn't realize like how tense and stressed out i actually was you know and and i feel um you know i didn't and i didn't notice it until you know it's like i'd been out of the band for a few weeks and my roommate kitty actually mentioned like you seem a lot calmer like don't don't get upset but i think being out of this band is a good thing for you and you know, I can see that. Well, Cliff Skurlock, thank you so much for well, being thanks, here. Thanks for having me, Joe. I appreciate it. The Trap Set is produced by me, Joe Wong, along with Chris Karwowski, who also edits the program. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at The Trap Set. And visit our website, thetrapset.net, to subscribe to our show for free. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please donate to our show. If you can't afford to donate, please tell a friend and give us a good rating on iTunes. Send your thoughts, questions, and guest requests to thetrapset at gmail.com. <laughs>